My name is David Andre and here's how to build anything with DeepSeek V3. Now this is a historical moment and I'm not over exaggerating. DeepSeek V3 is the first open source model in all of AI history that is better than the closed source models. It defeats both GPT-40 and Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, the new one, on many different benchmarks. And I'm going to show you that in a bit. So in this video, I'll show you how to use DeepSeek V3 inside of Cursor and how to build anything with it. So this chart alone should tell you just how impressive this model is. So on the x-axis, we have the cost, right? The price per 1 million tokens. And on the y-axis, we have the performance on the MMLU benchmark. So as you can see, DeepSeek V3 stands out from all the other models because it's just as good at Sonnet 3.5 or better than GPT-40 while being significantly cheaper. Right now, it's even on sale, so the pricing is unbelievably cheap. 0.014 dollars per 1 million tokens. So building any apps with it is nearly free and that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Now in terms of the model architecture, this is a mixture of experts model, also known as MOE. And what that means is that the model isn't just one big 671 parameter model. It consists of smaller specialized models, also known as experts. So maybe one of the experts is good at math, one of them is good at chemistry, coding. So there is like multiple smaller specialized models each trained to handle a specific aspect of a task. Now, who made such a good model? Like, what is the company behind it? Well, DeepSeek is a Chinese AI company that open sources all of their AI models. So they've been doing this for the past year and a half, and they released many different impressive models. But the release of DeepSeek V3 shows that China is quickly catching up to US in terms of AI capability. Let me show you. Here are six different benchmarks where DeepSeek outperforms the competition. So Again, this is the MMLU. Then we have GPQA Diamond. This is very hard questions, like PhD level questions. So as you can see, the only model better than DeepSeek here is the new Sonnet 3.5. Then we have Math 500. DeepSeek is the best, even better than Sonnet 3.5. Then we have the Amy benchmark, which is focused on ethics in AI and machine learning. So apparently DeepSeek V3 is the most ethical AI model on the market. Then we have the Code Forces benchmark, which is competitive programming. And here it completely smokes everything else. The closest to it is DeepSeek V2, which is again from the same company. And then SWE Bench Verified, which is software engineering, it's only outperformed by Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. So it really might be the best model in the world. I mean, the only argument is that Cloud 3.5 Sonnet new one is still better on some benchmarks. And this is how it performs on the needle in a haystack problem. And here it has perfect 10 out of 10 score on all parts of a token window. Meaning if you include really long prompts, it will not just forget random things in the middle like other models might do. Now, while this model is absolutely amazing, there is a catch. In China, every company is subject to government oversight, meaning if the government wanted to see the data that DeepSeek has, they could very easily get it. Also, if you go to chat.deepseek.com, which by the way, this is the easiest way to test out the model, it doesn't allow you to use ad blockers. So you might be thinking, okay, David, what does that mean? Well, just assume your data might be trained on and you might be thinking like, okay, but it's an open source model. Now, while that's true, the model is 671 billion parameters, meaning there is no way to run it locally, even if you buy 10 4090s. So you have to host it somewhere. And right now, the only place to host it conveniently is the DeepSeek platform owned by the company. So keep that in mind. Now, to be fair, there is a lot of positive around this model. Personally, I'm definitely a supporter of open source and DeepSeek is the best open source model in the world. So I love what the company is doing. They're open sourcing both the model and the research papers. And if we consider the fact that AGI is right around the corner, I think open source is really the way to go. Like having a single company, a single entity, a government in control of AI, that is by far the biggest risk, if you ask me. However, if the top AI models are completely open source, open weight, open research, open everything, then super intelligence can be decentralized, which means it cannot be abused by a single entity. So it's kind of funny to see that a Chinese company is basically doing open AI's job for them. With that being said, now let's get to building. All right, to get started, we need to set up a new empty project inside of Cursor. So let's open Cursor, let's open an empty folder. Just gonna create a new folder right here. You can use you know, VS Code or any, you know, WinSurf, any other code editor, it's up to you. And let's create a new file, main.py. Beautiful, let's go back to Vectal and see what the next step is. So we need to log into the DeepSeek platform. So go to this link right here, which will bring you to this logging page. Now again, keep in mind that this is a Chinese company. So I would definitely 
not use your main email and password in here. And once you log in, you should see the dashboard. Now here in the blue notification, you'll see that the DeepSync model has been upgraded to V3. But what it also says is that until 4 p.m. on February 8th, meaning we have five weeks basically, all API calls will be charged at the discounted rate. You can keep generating it 24 hours in a row and it will cost you like one and a half dollars if the model is running 24 seven. Anyways, let's go back to Vectal. This step we have completed, so let's mark it as complete. Now we need to copy the Python code from the docs. So this is the link for the DeepSeek docs. I'm gonna put it in the description that way easier for you guys and in here we need to go into the your first api call section so the first thing you should know is that they are using the openai sdk which is great because the api call is going to be familiar and if you've built ai agents in the past for example if you're in the new society and you went through the workshop we have on building your first ai agents you will know how to use this api and how to structure the code so basically DeepSeek just makes it a lot easier for us to use their api so if you scroll further down, you'll see the code we actually need. So let's switch to Python and let's copy this block of code. Again, you can easily do this even if you aren't a programmer. If you've never written a single line of code, use these AI tools and start building stuff because this is the easiest time in history to build any app, any AI startup, mobile app, a game, whatever you want to build. Now it's truly possible. It has never been easier. So do not use the excuse like, oh my God, David, I only use no code tools. That is for losers you can write code with these AI tools in plain English. So as long as you can type in English, you're good to go. All right, so we've pasted in the code. Now, as you can see, we need to put in the API key in here. Now, before I show you how to get the API key, let's quickly look at the technical report, which DeepSeek open sourced on their GitHub. Now, this is over 30 pages of just pure knowledge. Like this shows you what it takes to build a cutting edge open source AI model. And if you're actually serious about AI, I highly recommend you read this. Now, if you want a simplified four page version that is in plain English and it's actually easy to understand, in the new society, you'll find exactly that. So inside of the classroom under the templates and presets, you can find all of the codes from this video as well as all my other videos and the four page summary of the DeepSeek technical paper. So if you're interested in that, make sure to join the new society, it's linked below. All right, let's continue. So the next step in Vectal is actually not the API key, it's to top up two dollars. So if you go back to the DeepSeek platform, you'll be able to see your balance right here. It will probably say zero if this is your first time using it. So click on top up on the left and just charge in $2. It's really no need to put in more than $2 because this model is so insanely cheap. Now for the payment method, they actually have PayPal. So at least that's one thing that makes DeepSeek a little bit less sketchy. So once you charge into $2, if you go back to usage and refresh the site, you should see your new top up balance right here. So once you complete that, you can finally obtain your API key. So again, go to the DeepSeek platform and click on API keys on the left. As you can see, I already created a few, but if you haven't, just click on create new API key. I'm gonna name it Vectal.ai, which is the name of my AI startup, and then click on create API key. So make sure to copy it, go back into cursor, delete everything between these quotation marks. So make sure it's just the two quotation marks. Click in between of them and do Control V or Command V if you're on Mac and save the file. So this is what it should look like. Of course, as always, never share your API keys with anybody. I will delete mine before uploading this video. Now there's actually one last thing we have to do before we can run the model, and that is installed OpenAI package. So as you can see, it's underlined in yellow, meaning we don't have the package installed. So luckily installing it is very simple. So go to the top and open a new terminal, or you can do Command J or Control J if you're on Windows. And here you can simply type in pip install OpenAI. Now, if you have Conda, you might want to open a Conda environment. So I'm gonna do Conda activate test. Now, if you're not sure what Conda is, just ask any AI model such as Vectal, what is Conda and how do I set it up? And it will tell you exactly that. And the one thing that's good about Vectal is that it knows all your active tasks and what you're working on. So it has that additional context that other AI tools don't have. So you can work with it to complete your tasks a lot faster. So if you're an entrepreneur or a business owner, go to Vectal.ai and check it out. All right, let's go back to cursor. Once you activate your Conda environment, just do pip install open AI. As you can see, I already have it. So you need to also make sure that in the bottom right corner, you select the environment. So click on the version of Python. For me, it says 3.9, but we need to change that to the test environment I have. And now it should no longer be underlined, which means we are using the correct environment with the package installed. So now all that's left is to click run Python file and see whether we get a successful response. And boom, there it is. Hello, how can I assist you? So the prompt itself here is nothing crazy. It's, you know, you are a helpful assistant, hello. 
Now we're actually going to make it much more useful. We're going to implement token streaming and I'm also going to show you how you can use DeepSeek as the model inside of Cursor. So when you're using Cursor and you're seeing the code edits, it will be DeepSeek V3 powering those because as we saw earlier in the presentation, it is pretty damn good at software and programming related tasks. Okay, so the next step we have in Vectal is to implement the token streaming and we're actually going to use Cursor for that. So let's open the composer or the chat. Actually, I'm going to use composer with the agent. And for the model, I'm going to use Sonnet 3.5, but you can use anything really. I'm going to say update main.py so that we are correctly printing out the tokens for token streaming. Because right now, token streaming is set to false and we're printing the entire response at once. So first thing it should do, it should set the stream to true. Correct. And then it needs to print out the chunks of the token streaming. So for every chunk in the response object, it will check if it actually has some content inside of it. And if it does, it prints out that chunk and repeats that until the entire response is generated. So let's see, I'm gonna say count to 100, just so we know it's a different prompt. And there it is, it's counting to 100, so we can see it being streamed. In other words, we're not waiting until the entire message is completed. Instead, it's showing the tokens as they are being generated, which is much better user experience, right? So. That's that, let's mark this as complete. So now let's take a look at how to actually use DeepSeek inside of Cursor. So first thing we need to do is go to Cursor, open the Cursor settings, not the VS Code settings, click on models right here. And the very first action is actually very unintuitive. It is to disable all other models. So just uncheck any model you have active and then scroll down. And under OpenAI API key, we need to change the based URL to api.deepsea.com. So by default, it is gonna look like this. It's gonna be api.openai.com slash v1, but you need to change it to api.deepseek.com. Click on save. And then for the API key, the same process goes. So we can use the same one we have in here. That's probably the easiest. So just copy the same API key, open the cursor settings again, it's right here, and replace this with the API key. Now, again, make sure you have all other models disabled. And before we click at verify, we have to add a new model and name it DeepSeek Chat. So add model, make sure only DeepSeek chat is enabled and then click on verify. Enable OpenAI API key. And if you don't get an instant error, it's good. Otherwise you should say like the model cannot be used, blah, blah, blah. If it allows you to turn it on, it's a sign that things are working. So on the left, we can test it out maybe in the chat mode. You cannot use it in the agent mode, so keep that in mind. But in the chat mode, make sure you can see your model right here and you can say, hey, who are you? And it should say, you know, I'm deep seek developed by blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it's, it's giving us a generic response. That's what I want. Be specific. What kind of LLM are you? Boom, there we go. I'm deep seek chat developed by deep seek company. So as you can see, we have successfully integrated deep seek inside of cursor and we can use it to write code. I'm going to say update main.py to save the streamed tokens into a simple TXT file also add more explanatory comments. Let's see how it handles a simple coding task. Okay, so it seems to be working quite well within, of, within the cursor interface. So let's click on apply. You see that these are the changes. It's adding comments and then at the bottom, it opens an output TXT file and starts saving the text inside of it. So let's do that. I'll count to 100. I'm gonna do count to 500, each number on a new line. <laughs> That's cursor predicting um, my next thought. So if we run this, we should see a new file created. Boom, there it is. And if we open this file, maybe it will save after it generates all of them actually. Let's see, you know, there's only one way to find out. Okay, so will it save? Boom, and there it is, yeah. So it only saves after it generates all of them. Maybe you would want to change that to save it continuously. Maybe this is good enough. Depends on what use case you are using DeepSeek free in. With that being said, we can mark off the final task as complete and you now know how to build anything with the DeepSeek v3 model. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to go to Vectal.ai and sign up. It's an AI productivity tool I've spent the last two and a half months building. Obviously it has the task list functionality, but the main thing is the integrated AI agents that can see all your active tasks your user preferences and help you get your work done 30 to 50% faster. So again, if you're someone who likes to be hyperproductive, go to Vectal.ai and sign up. See you next time.